I don't know. There was a piece of me that just like was fascinated by again the, these older kids and wanting to find an identity and be cool enough and all the you know peer pressure type stuff that I'm sure all sorts of kids fall victim to. But for me personally, like it became an immediate obsession. I was smoking weed the first time. I would drink my dad's beers because it was kind of like a rite of passage every so often. But they were gross when I was a kid. Uh, so, but weed was kind of the first thing I think I was, I was probably, in, I was in eighth grade and, uh, that was the thing like immediately obsessed, like, Oh dude, this is cool. You know? And how often were you like getting high? Weekend warrior vibes. If, at first you go to school, you get off school. And then immediately if I wasn't hanging out with anybody, I was on aim, like where, where is it? Where are we going? What are we doing? And it was just like, that was the form of, of, of obsession. And then yeah. by Friday we'd have it all tied together and let's rip and run. And, and, and I mean, especially down South too, it was, I mean, it was a lot of fun. Four wheelers, mm. shooting guns, chasing girls. Wow. I mean, getting in trouble. I mean, it was a lot of fun. And then where did that take you? Did you, did you go on to um, try other things? <laughs> well, similarly to that, you know, I mean, the, the, the dare people aren't always wrong. They kind of, you know, tried to plant a seed in me that like this, there's typically a progression here. Like the gateway. <clears throat> You know what I'm saying? And that's, in yeah. my case, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of a stereotype. But um, it when I realized, like, oh, everybody's making a f- hardcore deal about smoking weed, and it's not, like, to me, personally, as the 14-year-old, like, you know, know-it-all, it's not that big of a deal. It became like, okay, well, what's, what else can we do? It's probably not a, not a big deal either. Stupidly, naively, me and some, some of the guys that I, I went to middle school and high school with, again, like a lot of us stayed close because we were soccer buddies. And I, some of them I'm still very close with and was in one of their weddings and um, a couple of them. But uh, anyways, we talk about this stuff, too. There was also like this weird generational thing. A guy that rode my bus from elementary school had an older sister who, unbeknownst to us, we, we would soon come to find out. But she she moved a lot of Oxycontin. Um, and this was also like 2010. I know, I now know this was like the precipice of the opiate epidemic. There wasn't even like a Mm -hmm. label to it yet, but what was happening. And I think, you know, anecdotally, there's probably a lot of, you know, like big pharma was pushing it. I mean, now there's lawsuits against like, you know, all these different pharmaceutical manufacturers, um, Purdue. And I think there was another one yesterday, even with like this huge million dollar settlement. Um, but grandparents in, in kind of ordinary people with pain and chronic pain and cancer and sort of ailments, like they were getting a lot of heavy duty narcotics and they were right in people's medicine cabinets. <clears throat> so this dude that I rode the school bus with, his sister was, uh, was unbeknownst to us. She was, she was like, she had a lot of, she, she moved this stuff as like, that's how, you know, that's how she made her money. And Michael at a pretty young age, I mean, very young age, was started learning kind of the ins and outs of what she would do and gained access to this stuff. I think that's how it went down. I'm pretty sure it was the sister that kind of like put the ball in motion. But before you know it, we're eighth, ninth, 10th graders, whatever. And there's this like hub of Oxycontin down the street from us. And we have no idea what we're playing with. And uh, I remember being um, in, in eighth grade in we went into the bathroom, it kind of like, you know, experimentation mode, like a lot of us and put our hands out and bloop, bloop, bloop. We don't know what these pills are, um, but we know that they make us feel kind of funny and cool and it breaks up the day and gives us a laugh and have something to talk about and down the hatch. And that, that was the first time I did, I, I did an Oxycontin. Um, it wasn't like this, like catastrophic snowball effect right away. But the, 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 the wheels were spinning. I, I, was, I was quickly mm-hmm. fascinated by like, oh, You were getting dude, like, like ideas yeah. of what right. else could this And like do? it creeps in, right? Like you can't tell like, oh, you're addicted to it. It was a gradual progression. In, 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 in so many ways, like I could say now, because I'm as old as I am and if, if, if been, you know, in recovery for as long as I have, you know, 14 to 19, for most folks, like especially, you know, as I, I am still in recovery and help people find recovery, like 14 to 19 is a pretty quick progression. But for me, if from 14 to 19, again, like talking about like crucially developmental years, it was kind of a, it, it wasn't overnight. It, it happened gradually. Uh, but th- yeah, the, the wheels were definitely spinning. And I was fascinated. 